In this segment of the video series in preparing for the National Kitchen and Bath Certification Exam, we're going to take a look at creating the floor plan for a bathroom. And in the construction planning process, I am going to show a few more things around a bathroom. Mainly the video series focuses on creating a kitchen. In this segment, I will cover a few aspects that may be particular to a bathroom. In the previous construction video, we drew out the walls for our kitchen project. In this segment, I'm going to draw out the walls for the bathroom segment. I'm going to take a slightly different approach. Let's go through, and I'm going to use the exterior wall tool, which in the template plan that I'm using, I've reprogrammed that to the interior six wall. Once I select that, I'm just going to hold down my mouse key, and I'm going to draw out the shape of the room. I'm not worried about the specific dimensions until I finish it up. When I click on a wall, I'm going to use the temporary dimensions and resize this. I'm going to set this dimension to be 320. And the opposing dimension, I'm going to go ahead and set that at 220. Now that I have the room sized, as I get ready to add a few interior walls, I'm going to take a 3D view and split the screen so you can see what's going on. Now the scenario calls for having a closet on the right. I'm going to use my interior wall tool and I'm just going to draw a wall through the middle or off to the side. The other thing the closet requires is a lower ceiling height. I'm going to select in the room and open that up and I'm going to set the ceiling height for that room to be 96. You can see in the 3D view that the wall dropped and in an elevation view, you'd be able to confirm that that's a 96 inch wall. Before I add additional walls on the left hand side of the room, I'm going to actually change the material and remove the molding out of that room. That will allow subsequent rooms to have the same materials and not have that molding in there. I'm going to double click on the room. On the moldings panel, I'm going to remove use default and remove the molding out of that room. All rooms that go inside of here will now not have that molding. I'm going to wait to change the hardwood material out of there since I'll have a shower that will have a different material. I'm going to use my wall tool and I'm going to create the area for the water closet. Again, I'm just going to use my temporary dimensions to set this. I'm going to set this to be 36 inches. And on this dimension over here, I'm going to set that to be 72 inches. I'm going to use the interior wall tool. I'm going to create the wall for the shower. I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to create the wall for the shower. Once that's selected, I'm going to choose both of the walls. And on the wall types, I'm going to change the wall type to a glass shower. If you hit define here, you can specify the thickness of your glass shower. I have my default set to be 3 8 in the template plan you're going to download. If you want to change it to half inch, just change that right here. Once I've selected that and made the change to the glass shower, you can see it in the 3D view. So I have my water closet and I have my shower. I'm going to place some permanent dimensions here. And to do that, I'm going to change my annotation set to the floor plan annotations. I'm then going to come over to my dimension tool and I'm going to select the interior dimension. And I'm going to run a dimension line through all of the walls in here. And then I'm going to pull that up and in position where I want it. Now when you do this, the default is to not have the dimension for the wall widths. If you open up the dimension string, there is an option to suppress that. I'm going to remove that option and you can now see the wall widths for that dimension string. I'm going to use the end to end dimension now. And I'm going to do the same thing for the entire wall length. We'll go ahead and pull that up and pull that into place. Since I am on the floor plan annotations and floor plan layer set, those dimensions are going to the floor plan layers, which simply means you're not going to see them on other layers. If I switch to the construction set, you won't see those layers. Back in the floor plan set, I'm now going to position these walls exactly where I want them. I'm going to highlight this wall. I'll enter it in the dimension of 123. And for the shower wall, I'm going to set that to be 72 inches. Once I have those positioned into place, I am going to move over to the construction plan set. I'm going to make the assumption that this wall is going to be a framed wall and new. So I'm going to switch over to my construction set. I'm going to click on this wall and I'm simply going to build the framing for it. I realize I haven't put any doors in here, so I may need to come back and reframe that if I've added some doors in this way, unless the doors are coming in off of another wall. This is a very fast way to be able to show your framing detail. If you don't have this detail and you're using a version that you just want to use a CAD cross box, you can use a CAD cross box and draw your own studs out. But it's a quick way to be able to show a new framed wall. Back over in the floor plan set, notice the framing is not being displayed. I'm going to place a few objects and fixtures in here that are a little bit different from the kitchen drafting since most of the project is about kitchen drafting. I'm going to open up the library and I'm going to place a few fixtures. In the core catalog, I'm going to go into the fixtures, bathtubs, drop-in tubs, and I'm going to find a bathtub and I'm just simply going to come over here and place one of these tubs. Next, I'm going to find a toilet. 
I'll scroll down. I'm going to grab an ADA toilet, come over here, place it. When you select an object, you can use the center tool. I've got a 36 inch room here. If I come in and center it on the room, I will make sure that I have 18 inches on my center line when I add the center line dimension. If I do a search for grab bar, you'll find that in the accessible design area of the library. I'm going to place that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this library as soon as I grab our shower fixtures. I also want to find a strip drain. And the strip drain will be just below that down here in our bathroom accessories. I'm going to come down, grab the strip drain, and I'm going to place a strip drain in here. And also, I'm going to grab the shower head and control, and I'm going to place a couple of those units as well. Sometimes when you go to place the control, you need to place it off to the side. If I zoom in, you notice that when I go to place it, it won't place. So I'll place it off to the side. I'll grab that, use the center tool, center it onto the fixture. And now when I can get both of those, I'll just draw a marquee around these, slide out, and create a copy of them and pull them over to the other side if the scenario calls for a dual shower head. And that's the way I'd set that up. If you're taking the exam, you may want to save a few of these items in your own library. I would recommend that in your bonus library, you download at the very least the accessible design catalog and also maybe some of the bath catalogs. Be familiar with those. You can go out to the 3D library. There are bathroom accessories, bathroom fixtures, which is where I found that strip drain. And then if you go down to into the specialty and other, you'll find the accessible design catalog. That's where I got that grab bar from. There's other CAD blocks in there that you may find it useful for your design work in both the kitchen and the bath. I'm going to add a centerline dimension for those fixtures. If you skip ahead in the video series and you watch the floor plan, when those items are placed, you can see how I've done this more in an automatic fashion. In this video, I'm going to do it manually. I'm going to change my dimension tool to the centerline dimension and I'm going to drag out a set of dimensions here. It's going to pick up more than we want as I drag this through. Let's go ahead and pull it up and position it and then we'll clean this up. Pull this dimension string up. When I highlight the dimension you can see that it picked up, if I zoom in, it picked up the different faucet components. I'm going to just pull that off of there. Picked up the tub and the walls and on this dimension string I'm going to open it up and I'm going to suppress the wall widths. I don't want to see those on this particular dimension string and now you can see that it's cleaned up and one of the things that I'll do is select the extension itself, pull it down into the fixture. So I'll just grab this extension, pull it down into the fixture and then I can precisely locate that. I may also grab this dimension extension and pull that down so I don't have a gap. And I'll just do the same thing on the other side here. Pull that down. One more modification since the glass won't exist in the plan when the plumbing shows up. I'm just going to pull those dimensions off of the glass shower wall. And now I have that centerline dimension string looking the way I want it to. Using the door tool, I'm going to place a door in both the water closet and in the shower. Simply select that door, change the hinge side. Notice that I come down here, change the hinge side. You can click that. You can also flip it the other way with the other tool. Next, I'll place a door in the shower wall. I'm going to go ahead and open this door up and make some modifications to it. One of the first things you may try to do is to use a glass door for the shower. Notice that it has a frame on it. You want to select a slab door for the shower and then we'll change the materials. I'm also going to change the thickness of this door to match the 3 8 thickness of the wall. On the options tab, if you want it to swing both directions, you can select this tool and on the casing, I'm going to remove the casing off of it. You want to change the hardware. You can go down here, you can find the different hardware. I'll just use a push plate on both the interior and on the exterior. There's a lot more options that you can find in the library. Once you've made that change, you can go into the 3D view and make further changes. Let's pull this in a little bit. Make sure your doors always open out. Selecting the, change the hinge side here too. In the 3D view, you can see what the door looks like. Let's go ahead and use the material eyedropper. Again, this may not be necessary for the exam since your view may not have the elevation view of it, but if you do the elevation view, you'll want that to look like glass. As long as we're in here, let's open up the material painter and change the materials on the flooring. Underneath the materials, I'm going to come down, I'm going to find a stone, and I'm just going to grab a limestone, use that, and apply that into the room. I'll also use the material eyedropper and just use that same material inside the shower for the time being. And also I'll do the same thing inside the uh, water closet area. The next thing I want to show you how to do is create a tub platform real quickly. Using the polyline solid tool, I'm going to come out here and snap onto the wall. I'm going to pull this into the shower. It's going to serve as part of the bench. 
Before I set the height, I need to understand this drop-in tub. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take a look at the dimension of it. It's 21 inches in height. So I'm going to go ahead and select the polyline solid that we just created. And I'm going to set the height of that to be 20 inches. And I'm going to make sure the floor to top is also 20 inches. Go ahead and set that. In the 3D view, you should be able to see a big block. And now all I'm going to do is create a cutout for that tub back in the floor plan view. I'm going to use the exact same tool, polyline solid. When you draw two of these over the top of one another, you can easily change this. and Press the tab key to make sure I get that polyline solid. You can easily change this to be a hole and that will pl place a hole inside of the tub platform. You'll be able to see that back in the 3D view. And of course, if you want to change the materials, you may need to do that for your elevation views. Let's go back into the library here, scroll down underneath the core catalog, materials, and I'm looking for tile. And I'm going to grab a tile that's in here under the stone. And just above that is a subway tile. I'll just grab one of those and apply that onto the object. And as long as I'm in here, I'll make the change as well into the shower. So if we do a wall elevation, we'll have that on the shower. Back into the floor plan view, I'm going to use this tub platform as also a bench in the shower. If I select that tub platform that we created, I'm just simply going to use the break tool, number three on the keyboard. You'll also find it down in your menu system in the lower left hand section, break. I'm just simply going to create a break on this. I'm going to pull it down to the edge of that shower wall, click on the edge over here. I'm going to set the dimension of this maybe 15 inches. Make sure that I have enough space in there. And I'm also going to select a tile pattern on the fill style. So in the 2D plan view, this looks more like what it would in the view. For this brick size, let's go ahead and set that to maybe be a 4 inch. And I'm also going to take the color down a little bit. You can now see the update of that in your floor plan view. Notice you can't see the shower walls. There is a transparent option for the fill. You can now see that shower wall. Make sure that you're careful about not stepping on an important architectural element. For the ceiling text, since we're doing fills, let's also put in a ceiling text in here. I'm going to put 108 for the ceiling height here. The ceiling is the same on the other side, except in this case, it's actually 96 inches. Using the copy tool, I'll pull that over there, make the appropriate changes in here for that text. And one final thing, we need to show the flooring material for these rooms. They're two different materials. I'm going to use a rectangular box for the material. I'm just going to come in here, drag out a box, just like the tub platform. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to change the pattern to the brick. I'm going to take the transparency and put it into the fill style. I'm also going to take and create a little bit lighter style for the fill. And on the line style, I don't want to see a black thick line around that. I'm either going to make it blank or just set it to be a white fill. And I'm also going to change the thickness for this on the fill style. Let's go back and let's change this maybe to an 8 inch fill style. See if that accomplishes what we're after. I'm going to copy this over to the closet area. I'm just going to slide a copy over here. This room over here had hardwood finish. If I double click on it, go back into the pattern, choose a custom, browse into the pattern files. I'm looking for flooring. Go ahead and select that. In here you'll find a number of different styles. I'm going to select the wood number three, change the spacing to be much smaller for strip, and we'll leave the rest of the settings okay. So now I have the different flooring materials and the ceiling heights added into the two rooms. I'm going to change the layer set to the mechanical and electrical and plumbing. If I zoom in, you can see all of the fixture labels have come up here. If I want to draw a marquee around these fixtures, if I don't want to see those, you can double click, open them up. You can suppress the label if you want to, or you can also specify the label. In this case, I'm just going to suppress it for those fixtures. In the mechanical plan and plumbing plan, let's assume that one of the things you may need to show for your design is where the vent is going to go for your toilet. I'm going to use a circle tool to represent that and I'm just going to come over here and drag out a circle. You can select that circle and set it to be exactly four inches in diameter if that's the size that you're going to use and then you can position that where you need to. And then you can do your text call out to do that as well. Also what you may want to do is let's use a CAD box for our clean out in the tub and I'm just going to come over here and draw a CAD box in here. Let me put a fill style in there so it's easy to see just using a solid fill style. And then I can do a call out. We'll just come over, place a call out over here. 
which may be more in your floor plan notes. But you can simply set your information there and then do the text off to the side to make sure that you have your clean out for or your access panel for your tub. That wraps up the video series for creating the construction drawing for your bathroom set. There's a lot more detail. I skipped over a lot of things in the bathroom. A lot more detail in the further video series in creating the kitchen. Many of those things will also apply to your bathroom as well.